we're going to see the types of bias that we have in statistics. We have three kinds of bias. The selection bias, selection, or well, bias that have to do with selection. Then bias that have to do with the procedure. And at the end, bias that have to do with the interpretation. In, in the selection bias, we have sample bias, sampling or sample bias. In procedure bias, we have measurement bias, measurement, in expert expectancy, expert expectancy or physician expectancy. Procedure bias, um, that is called like that, exactly procedure, procedure bias. In interpretation, we have confounding, confounding bias, lead time bias, and length time bias, uh, and also um, or interpretation in defect, or you could say detection defect, or detection bias. All right, so in selection bias, yeah, this is usually we we do not select the true sample size or the the sample that we have is not no, do not match with the population in the in the world. That is, for example, um, we have like fifty percent women and fifty percent men. If our sample has only thirty percent women and seventy percent men, then we will have a bias and say that. Uh, for example, we give the drug and we say uh, the drug works better in the main population than in the woman. And it is not that, that the drug works better in the population, just that more uh, men have the, the drug and for that we have more positive results or more uh, results favor in, in favor of the of the drug because we give it to more uh, men patients. And that is because our sample size is not is not matching to the population. That is selection bias. We will have a lot of selection bias. Many, many, uh, there are many examples. One that is very classic is the Bergson. Bergson bias. This is when the population, the sample population, is from hospitals. And so we would say, uh, let's say we are measuring the the exposure to to um, oh, I don't know, exposure. To, to smoking or whatever, or um, or how healthy is the patient? How how healthy are the patients? If we go at the at the door of the hospital, we're going to find only sick people instead of of having a good um, percentage of patients patients that could be fine, patients that could be bad. So in Berkinson bias, we are taking population of the hospital. If we want to see, for example, how how well they are eating is more likely that we have people that that eat bad in outside in, if we find them in the hospital than in whatever like in a a um, a place to do exercise or something like that. So this is Bergson bias. The other is attrition bias. Attrition bias is when we are doing the the procedure or the um, the experiment we have, mm, we have many. Could be not just two. Could be categorized by levels. Let's say the the people that that smoke between one and three cigarettes, between three and one box, three uh, cigarettes and one box, and more than one box of cigarettes, for example. And if if we were following these three groups, but if we miss a lot of uh, of participants that in the third group, for example, then we're going to be biased and we're going to say, oh, smoking is not as severe. Yes, it is not as severe because we lose the, the people that is smoking or the people that are smoking more. And for that, we have less results that are adverse to, or re less results that imply that smoke is, is bad. So this is attrition bias. So Berkinson and attrition bias are classical examples of selection bias. And the most common cause of selection bias is the sampling bias, that is, that we do, that our sample is not matching the population that we are trying to study. 
next in procedure bias we have measurement bias in measurement bias is when what we are trying to measure affects the measure itself let's say the Hausdorn effect Hausdorn effect in Hausdorn effect what happened was that a a company that does um, whatever is going to be to be observed by by other kind of people that is going to see if changing the illumination affects how the workers work. So they put more light and the the work was better done. They had more pro more products, faster products, etc. Then now they they put less illumination than what was at the before the the experiment and also the production goes up what happened with more illumination illumination and with less illumination both uh, both produce more more products and that is because the workers felt or they have the sensation that they they were uh, being watched watch by the or observed by the other people that are measuring if they produce more or less. So because we have people that is observing the workers, they work more, whatever, it doesn't matter if they have more or less light. Just the sensation that they are being watched makes that they produce more or that they go faster in the work. So this is how Thor effect. When we are measuring something and the just the simple fact that we are measuring that affects the measure itself. Next in expert expectancy, this is when they say bias because of the belief of the expert. Let's say the physician thinks that um, this drug is going to work and gives to the drugs to this group and placebo to this group. And the patient can see that whatever this this group of patient, the, the group of patients that is taking the drug is saying, he would see that like ah the, the patients are improving in the disease whatever, it doesn't matter if it is A or B or whatever, if it's something that happened to this group of people, it's going to say that it is that it is working. This is expert expectancy. In procedure uh, bias, this is the, um, the the patients do not spend the same time with the with with the person that is recording or analyzing the data, let's say with the with the physician for example. That is patients that are taking the the drug uh, spend more time with the physicians than the patients that are not taking the drug and for that obviously going to be a bias. The the solution in this two is to mm, to do a, a more uniform thing that the the procedure bias would not appear if both both group of patients have the same exposure to the physician or the same amount that spend the physician, but also the double double blind. In double blind, the nor either nor the patient nor the physician knows which group is taking the drug and which group is taking the placebo. That is. If the if the physician doesn't know which group is taking the, the drug, so the physician cannot say ah because this this group is taking the drug, I would say that these things are are good. It also it is not that the physician does it like on purpose, and does it unconsciously, but but if if the physician doesn't know which group is taking the drug or which group is taking the placebo, it would be easier not to think that ah because this group is taking the the drug is going there. In, in this was procedure expectancy bias. Uh, or in, in interpretation bias, we have confounding bias. This is when when there is something that affects the results and seems to be a a difference when in reality there is no difference. That is, for example. Hmm. Well, could be no difference, or could be like vice versa. Let's say, um, students, students that have greater size of shoes, 
do better in the in the exam of mathematics and so we could say oh so let's buy greater shoe size to each each child in order to have better outcome in the mathematics exam and no the issue is that because the the patients or well, the students that are greater and that are older in age they have more mathematics concepts and they do very in the exam because of the age but because of the age also the shoe size increases the feet uh, increases the um, growth and so the shoe size increases so it's a correlation between age and shoe size and age and mathematical outcome but we see those two associations and we see uh, because of increased shoe that is increasing mathematical outcome and there is just a confounding bias there that doesn't imply that buying greater shoe size would produce a better outcome in mathematics uh, other example would be um, in a in a in a administration or in a whatever work in that place, they they are measuring the time that the workers spend outside the the grocery, for example. And they found that the the people that have lung cancer or at the end of five years have lung cancer, expended more time outside the grocery. And so they could say, oh, expending more time outside the grocery produces lung cancer. And no, that that's not true. The issue is that. The, the people that expended more time outside the grocery was because they were smoking and so because they smoked so they got lung cancer for example and also you could say um, we see that people with with increased coffee coffee and consumption have higher bladder cancer and the issue is not that coffee produces bladder, bladder cancer is that patients that take coffee are also more likely to take for example to to smoke for example and smoke is a risk factor for bladder cancer uh, also the the confounding bias should not be confused with just um, mis you could say misclassification in misclassification what well, you could see it as um, misclassification or just well maybe don't miss classification but like effect modification effect modification in effect modification what happens is we have like the same uh, results but oh, well, I forgot too much in confounding bias um, the issue is we have uh, something that con that is confounding the study for example that that a smoke that coffee produces bladder cancer. So the the thing to do is to stratify the study. We were stratified by patients that do not smoke and patients that do smoke, and we see the measure of how uh, how these patients that smoke take uh, which level of coffee drink and these that do not smoke the level of coffee that they drink. And uh, at the end we will see if someone someone developed cancer or not we will find that no one uh, developed more more cancer uh, because of the of the coffee yes the the people that smoke will have more cancer but not the people that take more coffee that is if we stratify just by by coffee we will not see that that is we will see that the patients that take let's say we will have um, 10 people that take a lot of coffee but do not smoke and 10 people that take um, a lot of coffee and uh, they do do smoke then another group that, that take just little coffee and smoke and little coffee and do not smoke and like that we will go and we will see that among these among these patients there will be no difference in cancer. Yes, all these will have more cancer because all this smoke, but they will have no uh, and they will have no cancer in the stream because they do not smoke. But among these, or well, yes, obviously they will have some cancer. But among these, among the people that that take a lot of coffee and people that do not take a lot of coffee and both smoke, 
we would not see difference in blood cancer. And here patients, well, that's, mm, well, no smoke. And, no smoke and a lot of coffee and no smoke and little coffee, they do not have uh, more cancer or, or less cancer. So a stratification is the order to see if we have confounding bias. Now, in effect modification is exactly the same thing, that it looks that like we have a confounding, uh, confounding um, parameter, but when we do the stratification, we see that really in, there is a difference between, let's say that in coffee, we see that among patients that smoke, yes, coffee increases the 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 cancer outcome, and in pe people that do not smoke, can, coffee increases the cancer outcome. So we do a certification, and if we continue to have the difference in cancer, this is effect modification, and it is not a bias, but it's something that should be described. And so be careful with not confounding effect modification that is not a bias with confounding bias. In lead time bias, in lead time bias, we have uh, we con we we have confusing or we are confusing the survival survival expectancy with the time after detection of the of the disease. Time after detection. That is, if we have a a, a screening method, uh, let's say for um, Mm, breast cancer, and usually after the screening method, after the screening, um, we will find the the cancer, and the the life expectancy is five years. After this, if the if we have developed a new screening screening test that detects the cancer before here, now the the survival expectancy you would see you would see that would be let's say seven years but it's not that the life expectancy increases two years no it's just that the time that spends or the time that takes from the new detection to the death time increases but we are not if we're not doing anything after we detect this we are not changing the life expectancy we're just changing the time that takes the people to die after the the detection, we are just detecting it before, and so we are just saying the patient that has cancer before, but we are not doing anything else. So this is lead time bias. I think that it's very clear. In lifetime bias, this is when we overlook the more severe cases. This is, yeah, we could say that go. we want to see how, how risky it is to go in motorcycles. So we we call each people and we say, do you have a motorcycle? Yes, no. Um, have you have some um, some accident, etc., etc., etc. If 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 we do that, we will see that the people that have a very severe accident is not going to answer the phone. It's going to be just in bed or um, or paralyzed, whatever. He's not going to answer the phone. And so we would say we were just having a um, recollection of the patient that the the or the people that is saying that yeah I, I do good in motorcycle oh, I was a minor accident or whatever but we're not counting the people that is not answering that is the people that have the severe the, the severe accidents so we are overlook the severe cases and we would say that motorcycles are not not dangerous when truly they are and they are so severe that we overlook the the severe cases and last the detection bias in detection bias is when uh, let's say we have a, a a screening method or we are trying to detect breast cancer in different populations but we use different mm, different measures let's say a kind of mastography here and a kind of mammography here and or just by geographical geographical uh, differences we conclude that some population has more cancer than the other let's say ah uh, because this population has um, a lot of um, or they have menstruation at a great at a lesser age the beginning the menarche at a lesser age because of whatever kind of population or 
um, region we're taking. So for that we have geographical difference and that that produces that we have a, a detection bias. If we do a geographical matching or if we try to put them in the, in the same geographical characteristics, you will put this in, in characteristics so that we take in this population at the that they have the menarch at a lesser age with this population that have the menarch at a lesser age and we see which have, which have let, uh, cancer and then a group with um, menarch at a late age and we see which have great cancer so these are the bias um, these are the most important selection in procedure and the family in the next video we are going to continue with other uh, statistical procedures